Hello everybody! I recently wrapped up my first semester as a student at UT Austin as part of the MSDSO program, Master of Science in Data Science Online. All right, it's an asynchronous program, 10 courses, and it gives you a data science master's. All right, I think I did a video a few months ago, maybe back in June or something, uh, about getting accepted the second time around. All right, so first semester, I only took one course, and the reason is uh, I'm working full time and I had to move across the country in the middle of the first semester. So I said, okay, like I'm just gonna do one. So the first course that I took is Data Exploration and Visualization with Professor Klaus Wilk. I hope I pronounced that right, Wilkie? I think it's Wilk. And uh, he's great, I really enjoyed the course. So I'm just gonna kind of go over um, what the semester was like in terms of workload and difficulty level and give you, you know, kind of an overview of the topics we went over and give you some of my advice and tips for doing well in this course because I just found out that I did get an A, so alhamdulillah. Keep in mind, I don't have my mic attached this time. My mic is in storage because of the move and I don't have my tripod, so I kind of, I'll take a picture of how makeshift this setup is, but anyway, at least it works. So, all right, so data exploration and visualization. In this course we use R, and it was my first time ever using R Studio or ggplot2 or anything like that. I had used something in Python uh, with ggplot, uh, there's a version of it for Python, but anyway, uh, it was a really great course overall. In terms of grading, there was no final exam or midterm. It was made up of five homeworks and five projects and uh, three, I think it was three participation grades. Like, like, was it three? Well, participation was I think like 15%. Um, the vast majority of your grade comes from your grade on the projects. So I'll just talk about the grading first. Um, Everything is peer graded except for participation. So your homework goes anonymously, like it doesn't have your name on it and your your peers will grade. I think it's you have to grade four before you can see your own grade on something. Anyway, you're grading each other's papers and the rubric is also pretty lax, I think. Um, and your grade is the median of the first three grades that come through for you. All right, so even if one person gave you like an 18 out of 20, if the other two people gave you 20 out of 20, you're gonna get a 20 out of 20 score. And you can contest the score given to you, um, just like send it to the TAs and they can look at it. The TAs, by the way, I went to office hours a few times, the TAs were really nice and really helpful. Um, really great and super responsive as well. So in terms of grading, yeah, I mean, I, I, I did have a couple peer grading instances where Somebody took off points and they didn't say why, or somebody, somebody once said, uh, good job, I like how you did X, Y, and Z, and they gave me an 18 out of, like, they gave me 8 out of 10 for that metric, and I don't even know, yeah, so they said good job, and then they took off points, so that was really weird, but my median grade was still, again, I had, like, a perfect score, so, yeah, so I didn't appeal it or anything, but uh, I did read in the Piazza, so Piazza is, like, a participation grade, the forum, um, Piazza, it's, like, you just put on posts, posts about different topics and questions and you can do polls and all kinds of things. So uh, Piazza is the platform we use for the participation and yeah, there were some students who voiced a uh, concern about the peer grading, but I think overall um, it was good and people, I think when you're in a rush to see what grade you got on something, you're also kind of maybe more likely to rush on grading somebody else's, I think, and I think maybe that's why some people had issues, like, or maybe, I think grades maybe were more lax than they should have been, is what the professor even said, Is and I think that could be because people don't want to, like, read through somebody else's, they just, like, okay, I'll just give the person an A so I can, like, hurry up and see my grade, you know? Because if you take points off, then you have to say why, and that's more effort for people. But I also felt like there was a temptation to kind of grade more easily on somebody, or go easy on somebody, because you know, the time factor and the effort factor. So anyway, all right, so data exploration and visualization. Um, in terms of lecture topics, I'll just kind of go through um, our course schedule. Every Monday, the new, the week's lectures were released. So there were um, lecture videos um, for two different lectures a week. For each lecture, there is a worksheet and the worksheets are not graded, they're just for your own enrichment. And the worksheet content was useful for the homeworks and projects. So we did aesthetic mappings, telling a story, visualizing amounts, coordinate systems and axes, uh, visualizing, visualizing distributions, color scales, data wrangling. So that's like you know doing the mutate in um, in R, 
of visualizing proportions, getting to know your data, getting things in the right order. So like reordering of like fast, uh, fast factory level, factory level, um, color spaces, color vision deficiency. So how to choose the right color scales um, to optimize the number of people who can view it correctly. I think because there are uh, a certain percentage of people have certain like color blindness or weakness and uh, color deficiency, basically color vision deficiency. And so how to um, mitigate issues with that, um, visualizing trends, functions, functional programming, dimension reduction, uh, that was with the PCA, I think. Clustering, hierarchical clustering, data ethics, visualizing geospatial data, which I really enjoyed, actually, that was really fun. Uh, redundant coding, interactive plots, dealing with issues of overplotting, compound figures. All right, so overall, I didn't feel that this course was as difficult as Advanced Python, um, the one I did last spring. I would say the workload was less than five hours a week, maybe even like three or four hours, depending on the week. Um, but the last project, I think I put a little bit more time into it than that. But, um, but yeah, in terms of workload, it wasn't too bad. Uh, and looking forward, um, next semester I'm taking the probability course. What's it called? Let me check. Uh, probability and simulation-based inference for data science. And why am I taking just one course next semester? Um, again, I'm working a full-time job still. And I will be moving uh, out of the country like halfway through the semester. So... Again, I'm really looking forward to next semester, the probability course. Um, I've read the reviews. It's a little bit more challenging than the data viz, but it should be a lot of fun and useful. So um, I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And if you're in the application process, good luck to you. And see you guys next time.